Hey, what's going on, everyone? How you guys doing today? My name is Matt Jarbo. This is Three Buck Theater, and the Joker just screened for the first time at the Venice International Film Festival to rave reviews. Critics in L.A. got to see it the other day. Their reviews just came out. And as a result, a lot of people are really, really, really liking the movie. But there's an interesting conversation that I've seen brewing today from a popular movie blogger that I do want to address and has a lot to do with who should or maybe shouldn't watch The Joker based upon societal implications. Now, in our current society, in our current day, People like to blame other people for everything. They like to blame other things for everything instead of taking responsibility. And I think that we as a society need to 100% move away from that. Entertainment is entertainment. There are people out there who are fundamentally broken, but the entertainment that they consume oftentimes is not what drives them to commit the acts that they do. And trying to proliferate from that fear mongering is not going to benefit anyone. And I say this as a person who five years ago was involved in a campaign called Gamergate, which was and still still is for the ethics in video game journalism. And a lot of that did involve pushing back against the media, the games media, the hobby enthusiast media for games journalists that were trying to smear gamers as well. Alt-right, previous than alt-right, white nationalist, West, racist, bigoted, misogynist, violent people. And we know that's not true. And I feel like this is being brought up once again, and it's 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 not going to be good. So the story of the Joker, as we know, is Arthur Fleck turns to a life of crime after basically being forgotten by society and, and other things happen. I haven't seen it, so I don't know what's going to push him down that pathway. But we do know that, quite frankly, it's based on. Travis Bickle. This has been known for quite some time back in 2017 when Martin Scorsese, you know, when they first announced the Joker and they said that Scorsese was going to be a producer. Everyone is like, yeah, no, it's straight up. It's freaking it's, it's taxi driver. It's completely taxi driver. Everyone knows that it's just going to be done uh, from the perspective of the Joker. And again, an interesting character study. I mean, look over here at the Rotten Tomatoes page for it. 86% based off of 22 critics. I did a full RT recap going through the top critics and what they have to say. And it's interesting, but the general consensus here is that it's the infamous central character is a, a chillingly plausible origin story that serves as a brilliant showcase for its star and a dark evolution for comics inspired cinema. At no point is it really saying that it's based upon current events, current times, current trends, or painting any person or any group of persons as violent criminals. And that's one of the reasons why when Peter from Slash Film puts out this tweet this morning saying it Joker feels like if Scorsese made Taxi Driver as a comic book film, amazing performance, great score, but I'm not sure it knows what it's trying to say could be potentially dangerous for the wrong person to watch some fun twists that make me want to see it again and disgust. OK, so all oh, that's fine, except for, you know, the, the could potentially be dangerous for the wrong person to watch. And he was called out for this. He was he was called out for this. In fact, he responded by saying a bunch of people giving me shit for suggesting that Joker potentially might be a dangerous movie for the wrong person to watch. Like that's a controversial statement. It is a controversial statement, Peter, when you, the person who runs one of the largest movie news websites on the Internet and a person who is a hobby, a, a, you know, enthusiast press for a hobby that you love watching movies comes out and starts trying to say that perhaps people who are going to enjoy the Joker could be potentially be smeared as as bad people is not a good look for anybody. We've seen it happen before. And when it comes to the left leaning media, right, we're going to see a lot of that. And quite frankly, I am tired of it because it's not true. But of course, again, his echo chamber backed him up here with this guy here saying, I mean, it's not like some disaffected white guy mad at society, letting him down, dress up like the Joker and shot up a movie theater or anything. And he says this and that movie had a moral counterpoint. So he's obviously referring to James Holmes. Now, if you don't remember James Holmes and what happened with that back in July of 2012, allow me to recap for you looking at the Wikipedia page. James Egan Holmes is a convicted murderer responsible for the 2012 Aurora, Colorado shooting in which he killed 12 people and injured 70 others at the Century 16 movie theater July 20th, 2012. He had no known criminal background before the shooting occurred. Holmes booby trapped his apartment with explosives before shooting which were diffused a day later by bomb squad. Holmes was arrested shortly after the shooting and was jailed without bail while waiting trial. Following this, he was hospitalized for attempting suicide several times. He entered a plea of not guilty by reason of insanity, which was accepted. His trial began on April 27, 2015, and on August 24th, he was sentenced to 12 consecutive life sentences and 3,318 years without the possibility of parole. We're never going to see James Holmes again. 
But Peter is making it out to be like someone watching the Joker or if James Holmes watched the Joker, it would push him to do a thing like this. Well, hate to break it to you. A uh, book came out from a psychiatrist who spent time with him, and this article appeared. It says, what led James Holmes to the Aurora Theater shooting? New book suggests answers aren't likely. This is an excerpt. The psychiatrist who spent hours talking to mass murderer James Holmes says that what led Holmes to open fire in a crowded Colorado theater was a one-of-a-kind vortex of his mental illness, his personality, and circumstances, and some other unknown currents that will probably never be recovered, saying a big part of it is hidden in Holmes. Uh, it's a mind, his mind, and we can't see it either. William H. Reed said in an interview with the Associated Press about his book, A Dark Night in Aurora, Inside James Holmes and the Colorado Mass Shootings. So a psychiatrist who spent time with him enough to get enough about him to try to figure out why he did what he did can't even determine why he did what he did. But no, 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 no. Even though you want to use this as the basis of your argument, you still want to come out and try to paint people uh, who are going to potentially do this. You're, 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 you're trying to pigeonhole people and put them in a box. That's not going to work here. James Holmes is a one of a kind vortex, one of a kind vortex. Okay. And I, and I say this as a person who spent 13 years, 14 years in my life, and I'm 37 working for movie theaters, working in that industry, dealing with those kind of crazy people, both good, bad, drunk, whatever. Okay. And I don't want people like you, Peter, a person who I do actually respect coming out and saying things that are going to further, further demonize people going out to going to see a movie or, or put fear on people for going out and enjoying their life. You are literally fear mongering with this tweet, but you know, no, here's the thing. Here's the thing. What if, what if it's not just uh, what if it's not, you know, a one of a kind vortex, right? What could potentially be the other Avenue here? Peter is not quite touching on, but you know, is in the back of his mind. Is it Video games, perhaps, because that seems to be a uh, that seems to be something that people like to go to because it's the number one entertainment medium in the country or in the world with over a hundred billion dollars in, in annual revenue. I mean, sure, but the question then becomes: Do video games make kids more violent? Because that again is going to be the next goalpost moving argument that someone like Peter is going to put out. Saying Reacher's explains they may not be as destructive as we think. Oh, that's interesting. So the article here says the research on this question is mixed. For decades, researchers have conducted studies to find out whether violent video games lead to problems such as aggression, lack of empathy, and poor performance in school. Many studies have found that people who play violent video games are more likely to engage in aggressive behavior, but there, and there was enough research to lead to this conclusion from the American Psychiatric uh, Association back in 2015, concluding that playing violent video games leads to more aggressive moods and behaviors and detracts from players' feeling of empathy and sensitivity to aggression. Now, that was one study from the APA back in 2015, but it goes on here. But a large contingent of researchers focused on pediatric and adolescent health disagree. In fact, a group of 230 scholars from universities across the globe published an open letter in 2013 calling the APA stance on violent video games misleading and alarmist. And many of those are the same scholars who spoke out after the 2015 policy statement. So, the, the APA did, did research on it. They, this is what we discovered. And a lot of other people are like, mm, no. And you know what? Time and time and time again, that particular mindset has come up. Trying to blame it on video games, blame it on movies, blame it on TV. We have a mental health problem in this country. No one's going to argue against that. But putting it on something else rather than the actual person, their own actions, and the fact that maybe society fails them when it comes to dealing with mental illnesses is just bullshit, Peter. It's bullshit. It's lazy. It's lazy. That's what I have to say to you. It's lazy. But you know what? Let's, let's look at this one. Oh, Fortnite. Kids play Fortnite, right? Uh, is Fortnite the most popular game in the world? Well, according to this here, uh, how big is it? 250 million players. Over two-thirds the size of the U.S. population play Fortnite, a battle royale game where you are meant to be the last person standing by any means necessary. Oh, wow, Peter, are you going to sit there and think that 250 million people are all going to be violent sociopaths willing to go and shoot up a theater because they watch the Joker? And obviously, I'm being a little bit hyperbolic here, and I get that, but I'm being hyperbolic on, on purpose. Making these kind of claims in this day and age is hyperbole. It is a falsehood. It has been proven false by multiple studies, multiple research, and all it does is feed into a generation of fear mongering and anything else. You're upset people are giving you shit over a bad take because it's a bad take. It's entirely a bad take. I don't think you're a bad guy, but this is a bad take. All right. I've been in this world for years 
not only watching violent movies, playing violent video games, and dealing with the stigma brought on by enthusiast press who live on the, on the West Coast who don't understand how a lot of the rest of the world thinks or operates. They take these kind of moral platitudes because it gets them clicks, it gets them hits, and I'm honestly surprised you haven't doubled down on your website. It's, it's, your, your tweet is featured on the article about reviews, but you didn't actually review the movie which I find to be kind of funny. It's like, I went to go actually find your review to read your review to find out what exactly in the movie was going to push Arthur Fleck towards this thing. And all I found was a tweet. 280 characters does not in any way back your point. Because, but the truth be told here, you mostly live on Twitter. Like you mostly just live on Twitter. So I, I, I get that. But if you're going to make this kind of claim, if you're going to try to take this moral high ground, play this moral platitude, do us all a favor and write out your thoughts. In fact, you should do it here in the comment section on this video, because I think that would be the best thing for you. If you want to make that claim, back it up. All right. Anita Sarkeesian made that claim for years about video games turning people violent. And everyone at this point is now basically laughed her off because it's not true. Moral grandstanding for no other reason than trying to play up a certain narrative is either done for ignorance or for profit. I'd like to think for you on your side is more or less done for ignorance and not for profit because the last thing we need is more fear mongering in this world. We already get enough of it. Anyway, those are just my thoughts on the situation. I hope to hear yours. Please let me know down in the, in the comments below. If you want to get on the action, come on over to facebook.groups.com uh, forward slash three bucks theater. Anyway, the link's right there. You can do that. Or if you want to talk to me, and Peter, this goes directly to you, I am live on this channel Monday through Thursday night, 11 p.m. PST, roughly to about 1 a.m. PST, uh, 1 a.m. PST, and you can come on and talk to me. The number is open and everything else. I look forward to your guys' thoughts. I look forward to your comments and your opinions. Have yourself a great day and peace out.